Welcome to Linear Algebra 1. In this course, I will be covering everything from vectors to systems of linear equations to matrices and to eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So today, since this is your first lecture of this series, I will be talking about the properties of the real numbers and some notations that I will be using in uh, these uh, videos, in these lectures. So some the, the first uh, the thing that I will teach you is notation. Notation. Okay, so so if there are four sorts of you know symbols that you need to be uh, aware of and you need to be comfortable, you need to be comfortable with. And let me just you know create them separately. So A B C D. The first one is this symbol. The double lined R. This this means so anytime I use three lines, anytime I use three lines, that means that means definition. Definition. And I the, 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 the symbols on here and over here, these are very rare and you will rarely see them. However, you know the upside down A means for all. For all, and you know, the, 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 the A and the A kind of match, and the flipped E stands for every. It stands for every. So these are just some other symbols that are not as important, but you know, just to you know, you know, just in case you, uh, you try to read a linear algebra textbook or you know, just a book, you know, you might see these symbols, and that's what they didn't, and that's what they mean. So okay, so this is a very simple uh, symbol. You probably saw this in high school, and this means the real, the real number system. In the, in the advanced linear algebra one uh, series that I may cover, I, w I talk about how different number systems have their own different properties. And you know, I also talk about that in real analysis if you are interested. And I show you how the naturals are constructed, how the reals are constructed. And I also minorly talk about how the complex numbers work. Okay, so the second uh, the sort of notation that you need to be comfortable with it is, is this e, e, this e with the round, with the with a round back over here. So this means to belong to. This means it's an element of. So or 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 so you know belongs. It means belongs to, or you can think about it, think about it as it's an element of, element of. So I will also give you examples once I define them. So if you see W R T, this means with with respect to respect to. If you see L H S, this just means left hand left hand side left hand side. And if you see R H S, this just means right right. Hand side. Hand side. Okay, so before I move on into the properties of the reals, because linear algebra one will only concern itself within the real number system in honors linear algebra, uh, if your university offers it to you, or in the series that I will cover and call advanced linear algebra one, you know, we will be talking and working within the integers and maybe the rationals. And you know, the, you know, these should be the main ones. These are the main ones that you know, you need to be concerned about. Okay, so just to give you an example, the R, the R just, you know, you, 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 the reals, you can think about this as a number line, as a number line. So, you know, you saw this in high school, you you have been working with the real number system, with the real number system since grade one. If I was to give you five, and that that's zero, you know, you would say five is in you know, the real numbers, in order to say belongs to or it's an element of, you use this symbol. So you say five is an element of the reals. And you know, the with respect to and the left hand side and right hand side, these are for, you know, proofs. You know, you won't see these to denote any mathematical statement. You know, you will only use these to prove or to read or to read proofs. 
Now, so I really hope you understand the notation. Now let's move on to some properties because in this introductory video, I also want to cover properties properties so you know we work in these things called fields the reals are a field the rationals are a field and you know in order for you to be a number system you need to have some sort of rules and if you are breaking any one of those rules then you are not that that specific set so any so all all elements all elements that exist that exist in R so the real numbers, you know, follow, follow, you know, these two, two binary operators or operation axioms. So, you know, axioms is a more fancy, more mathematical way of saying properties. So anytime you read axioms in your mind, translate that to properties. So properties. So what are these? So you know we have our set R because event you, know, you think of R as a set because it has elements, you know. And if you want to learn more about what sets are, then you can go through the real analysis uh, playlist, or you can just search up sets in in my YouTube channel, and then it should show you that you know the uh, the, the basics of sets. So you know the reals combined with addition and multiplication are what we will be working within. So, you know, addition and multiplication will have their own axioms, which, you know, again, translate that in your head into properties. So I just want to make it very simple and clear for you. You know, the, 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 we have four for addition. We have four for multiplication. And we have one, which is called distributivity. Now, the the addition ones will mirror the multiplication ones and the multiplication ones will mirror the the addition ones so the first one that we have is called additive commutativity which which just says that if you have two elements let's just call a plus b that's the same as b plus a for all okay so don't please don't be confused by the symbol this upside down a is for all okay it's for all okay so this is for additive commutativity commutativity commu commutativity and the a is for additive for addition additive so a plus b is equal to b plus a for all a and b which are elements of the reals okay the second one, it's called additive associativity. These are just properties. Don't be afraid of these. These are just some, you know, if if all numbers were objects, these are adjectives that are just describing their behavior. So no need to be confused by these. Additive associativity just says that if you have A plus B plus C, that is the same as me saying A. And, you know, you add to B first and then you add C. This works for all A b c which are elements of the reals again a is for additive and this second a this second a is for associativity associativity i'm running out of space here the third one that we work with it's called the additive neutral that just says that if you have some element and you add zero to it you will have a for all a that are elements of the reals okay this should be you know common sense to you however it's an axiom so it's my duty to to show it to you and the fourth one here it's called the additive inverse so you know I'm not gonna write or actually I should write it to be to be accurate for all a's which are elements of R there exists um, a negative a which is also an element of R such that such that let me take care of this D let me let me erase this uh, the distributivity d so so for all for all a's which are elements of the reals there exists a negative a which is an element of the reals such that if i was to just add them a plus negative a i will get my neutral so my uh, additive identity which which is zero right and it, it, you know th that's what we use here it's neutral it doesn't do anything so these are the four ones 
Additive commutativity, additive associativity, additive neutral, and additive inverse. Now, the multiplication ones will mirror this. Okay, the, the multiplication ones will be multiplicative commutativity, multiplicative associativity, multiplicative neutral, and multiplicative inverse. So for multiplication, again, you take one element and you multiply by the other. That's the same thing as me saying multiplying the other element by the first one. A times B is the same as B times A for all A and B. Again, the comma, I don't think I've mentioned this, the comma, you can translate, tra <laughs> sorry, translate this to and. The comma is the same as you saying and in your head. So so this says a times b is equal to b times a for all the upside down a is for all a and b which are elements of the reals and it might get you know it might take you a little bit of time to get used to the notation but again don't be scared this series is really simple and i'm just you know showing you the axioms and in, in, in the most mathematically rigorous manner the reason why i'm doing this is so that you, you know you you understand how how you might see it in in a textbook that might be very mathematically advanced you know in a second i can write these to you in a very simple manner and you know the, the, again the, the symbols don't be confused by the symbols because the symbols only reduce space and time for you and the second one that we have it's called multiplicative associativity a times bracket b times c is equal to you know a times b and that's in brackets times c for all a b c which are elements of the reals multiplicative neutral just says that if you have an element and i multiply it one by it i will still have a i will still retain the same element again the same thing as over here so one will be your multiplicative identity so you know to conclude this mathematical statement a times one will be a for all a which are elements of the reals the last axiom for multiplication, it's multiplicative uh, inverse, MI, which just says for all A's, which are elements of the reals, there exists, there exists uh, inverse, sorry, N, A inverse, which is also an element of the reals, such that if I was to just multiply these two, A times A inverse, I will have one. And I just told you that one is my multiplicative identity. So, you know, you see some commonality between these two. You have commutativity, additive commutativity. Here we have multiplicative commutativity. You have additive associativity. Here we have multiplicative associativity. You have additive neutral. Here we have multiplicative neutral. Here we have additive inverse. Here we have multiplicative inverse. All of these will be elements of the reals. If you can notice, all of these are elements of the reals. And the same thing over here. All of these are elements of the reals. Nothing is exiting the real number system. This, so the addition, has its own identity and multiplication has its own identity. So even though these two things might look different, there is one last axiom, one last property that connects these two. It's the connective tissue between these two binary operations. We call addition and multiplication binary operators. So the last one, the D, the distributivity, states that if you, if you have A times B plus C, that's the same thing as me saying A times B plus A times C for all A, B, C, which are elements of the reals. So, you know, I call it the wave method. You assign, uh, you know, you assign the variable to every single uh, term inside of this binomial and you know you are an expert at this because you probably did this in high school however it's very important to define the left hand side so this is the left hand side distributivity there's also this thing called the right hand side distributivity the reason why i'm showing you this is just in case you see this so that you don't you don't get confused 
this basically states is that if I'm adding a plus b and if I'm multiplying c I can distribute from the right side as well so like this I can do this as well so this will be the same as a times c plus b times c for all a b c which are elements of the reals so these are your nine axioms. I'm counting this as just one axiom, the distributivity axiom. So four for addition, four for multiplication, and one for distributivity. <clears throat> if you understand how these axioms work, then you know understanding vector, uh, understanding vectors, understanding scalars, uh, un, you know understanding linear algebra in general will be you know much easier for you. Just make sure you understand these, how these work. You don't have to prove them. The, be the, the best thing about normal linear algebra, and not the advanced linear algebra, is that you don't have to prove it. You just have to compute it. You know, and, and that's an advantage for some people and some people like proving. Anyway, so I really hope that this video was helpful and I will see you in the next video.